piece of meat, boy. Go, go, go. Welcome back to the StarCraft Weekly News. I am Artosis. I will be your host once again. And let me get right into the news this week because there is something that is going to shock you. But I promise you, it will not shock you as much as it shocked me. Already, there is another professional player in Korea that is a foreigner. I know. It's, it's, who could it be? Well, let me tell you. First off, there is a team called Frag Dominant. They're a very heavily sponsored team from America, and they do a lot of other games. But they have picked up what they label, let me read here, uh, a professional StarCraft player from France. His ID is Toad. You may not have heard of him. In fact, I'm sure you haven't heard of him. I'm not talking about Todd the War 3 Pro. This is someone else. His name is Toad, and he's a StarCraft player no one has ever heard of. But Frag Dominant has him on their team now. He is living in Korea. And let me just read some excerpts from the news about Toad. Well, while in Korea, Toad will be training with other professionals to advance his skills and prepare for future events. With the help of Frag Dominant and its loyal sponsors, Toad will be traveling to a large list of venues in the 2009 circuit, and he will be the only local French professional gamer attending live events. Well, I wish someone would have told me about this circuit of events in 2009 because I would like to play in them, wouldn't you? Well, there aren't really any events in StarCraft for foreigners except for WCG, occasionally uh, another nicely run tournament like TSL or something like that. But I, I don't know, this is really quite astounding. I promise you it is not a joke. Frag Dominant has in fact picked up this player, sponsored him, and he is bad. I have spoken with him already. He is about a uh, D-plus level player, if I had to guess. But I will be trying to get a video interview with him sometime in the near future. Hopefully we will be able to get to the bottom of this. But congratulations to Frag Dominant for putting in absolutely no effort uh, before recruiting a StarCraft roster. So on to the other news. MYM, the ex-MYM team rather, has picked up a new sponsor there with ESC, and that is a German Counter-Strike multi-gaming team. So good work to them, really nice to keep them together. Such a strong and powerful roster. It would have been a shame to see them all split up and split amongst uh, the other teams, such as TOT and ROX and whatnot. And, well, later on this weekend, we're going to see Idra go up against F91 in seven games. A lot of money on the line. Uh, I think we can expect Idra to do very, very well there. Finally show the skills that he has really produced lately because he has not been in the limelight lately. Uh, you know, it's been mostly known. No one's been talking about Idra. No one's really been thinking about Idra. But he's still here. He's still playing a lot of StarCraft. And he's going to show his skills against F91 in his best matchup. So make sure you tune in for that. Uh, also, BlizzCon 09 has been announced. It's going to be in August this year, the 21st and 22nd, I believe it is. And you know what? That's really fun. I, I had the privilege of shoutcasting at BlizzCon this past year. And let me tell you, it is a fun event. If you can be in uh, Anaheim, California for this event, definitely do it. It is worth it. A lot of StarCraft players show up to hang out, play some StarCraft II, watch the tournament. You know, there's a lot to do there. A really, really fun event. I promise it, it will be worth it if you can go. And so that's pretty much all the news in StarCraft I for the foreigner scene. But uh, let's go into some StarCraft II news for a moment here. You know, as the beta gets closer, uh, they're really announcing a lot more things about the game. For instance, uh, there's some new mechanics going on where it's going to use up your time instead of that macro because the macro's been made easier. For instance, the queen is going to be able to make more creep, uh, add four larva to the hatchery, which is really quite nice when you think about it, and make a defensive swarm. Uh, then there's this dark pylon for the Protoss, and this dark pylon is amazing. It can make the probes mine faster for a little bit. It can make any unit invisible for a little bit. So, I mean, wow, a DT wasn't enough, I guess. We need, like, a, I don't know, a, a cloaked carrier or something. And it can also transfer its energy to a spellcaster, such as a High Templar. And, well, not to be outdone, Terran, well, the scanner is coming back. Um, supply depots can also get a little bit more supply on them. And, well, they're going to be able to call down from space 
uh, some technology that's already thousands of years old. It's the mule. And that's going to be able to mine a little bit quicker for them. So, you know, not to be outdone by new invisible carriers and faster mining probes and extra larvae. We are going to have mules in StarCraft II for Terran. So thank you for that. <laughs> but, but seriously, uh, StarCraft II, as the beta gets closer and closer, you know, I have more and more faith in Blizzard. They are doing this right. It's really looking like it's going to shape up to be an excellent game. And I just can't wait to see exactly how well that's received in Korea and elsewhere. So keep your eyes open for that. That is going to be a great new time for StarCraft players. So on to the Korean scene. Uh, the Bisu vs. Jadong match on GOM TV has been pushed back till March 1st. And that is actually because they want some more practice time. You know, this is kind of an important match. You know, it's not like an OSL Finals or anything, but these are two of the very best players in the whole world right now. They are both just on fire, especially Jadong. So this should be an excellent match. And then, well, CJ's winning streak in the Winners League is finally over. CJ has been winning every single match. They looked unbeatable, but then this really tall kid named Cal came along. And Cal from STX Soul all killed CJ. Uh, in other news, in the Winners League, Haiva is finally starting to show his real skill. If you recall, last year he was Rookie of the Year. And this year he's been a little bit quiet until just recently. This week he got three wins against both uh, Lee Calf Oz and Air Force. Or rather, Hwasung Oz and Air Force. What a silly new name that is. But... Uh, Haiva really showing a lot of skill, and in an interview in Korean, uh, the head coach Koss, he said, you know what, Haiva is a genius of Zerg, and he is not showing his full skill yet on these games. And, you know, that's, that's what I hear. Haiva is going to be a great new Zerg in the future. Keep your eyes on this kid. He is really talented. And, well, Sea Shield, one of the foreigner's absolute favorite pro gamers, is finally showing skill again. Uh, for a long time there, he could not buy a win, and... Now, finally, he has defeated Stork and this Juni kid. And really, he played a very good game against Stork. It was, it was a lot of fun. And it was really great to see him back in some of his previous shape. So let's hope that he can stay up there. One of the great macro Terrans of all time. And, well, you know, i got to bring it up. This Gyumchi kid from Woongjin. Well, when they played SKT1, the final game, you know, it was 3-3, three and three, the very final game on Medusa, Bisu against Gwemchi. And, well, Gwemchi looked like he had Bisu absolutely killed. You know, he got a quicker expansion up, he won the first battle. And I was thinking, wow, Bisu is so dead. But then Bisu's like, no, I'm not, I'm Bisu. So Bisu came back, and it looked like Gwemchi had no chance. He had almost no units. Bisu had a ton of units. So what does Gwemchi do? He picks up two DTs in a shuttle, and he sends it at Bisu's base. And of course, this brings him back, and he wins this match. A uh, really amazing match. I suggest you go watch it, whether you like PvP or not. It really does show how ridiculous DT drops can be. And, well, Gogo, -Go, he, he looked like he was going to all kill uh, Hua Sung Oz until Jadong said no. Yeah, Jadong then decided that he would kill Gogo's team for the insult upon his team. And Jadong is just showing top form right now. Such a great player. Can't wait to see him versus Bisu. And really, you know, he's... It's amazing how much skill he's showing, but Flash is showing even more skill. Flash is dominating absolutely everything. This kid is barely losing a game anywhere, and he's really been amazing to watch. You know, you can learn a lot just by watching Flash VODs. Uh, definitely the highest understanding of Terran and of StarCraft's economy overall ever possessed by a player is possessed by Flash. Uh, it's interesting to note that only one player seems to have his number recently, and that is UpMagic, who has made it into both single leagues and also doing pretty well in pro league as well. Really exciting games to watch uh, Flash vs. UpMagic. Really, you can see the shock on Flash's uh, face when UpMagic does take him out. So, you know, that is pretty much it for the news this week in StarCraft. Uh, next week, uh, what we hope to see uh, at StarCraft for All is, well, more on StarCraft 2. We really plan on putting out some more videos pretty quickly here. And hopefully I can get an interview with this new foreigner pro gamer, Toad. I, I'm really looking forward to that. I, I really want to get his take on a few things. So that is about it. Thank you for tuning in. Any questions, comments, criticism, anything like that, please do let us know because we are trying to improve here. So that's it. Thanks for watching.